Howdy folks, I wanted to do a review of Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. Actually this is probably the wrong way to take this whole video. I wanted to just talk about Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls as perhaps a blueprint of the wrong way to do a Kickstarter. And I really like Kickstarter, I've funded a lot of projects on Kickstarter, I'm considering projects that I'm working on currently to move on to Kickstarter. I think it's a really good opportunity for a wide variety of folk to get projects that are amazing funded. My broader concern is associated with a few things that came through this Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls thing. I do not currently hold a copy of Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. I came to this because I was just interested in role-playing games through Kickstarter. Uh, I found this, this looked interesting, it looked legit, and I thought I'm going to put in my money. I put in 60 bucks, which would get me this. Now I put this money in uh, almost a year ago. so. February 11th, 2013. In order to get uh, a book and all this amazing stuff that looked just wonderful. So it's now January and this was estimated delivery in August. I put my money in February last year so I basically had my money in the game for 11 months associated with this. Now this wasn't poorly funded at all. Uh, this guy, Richard Loomis, made, uh, uh, you know, 125000 and change on this thing. Seems like a good idea. Okay, so let's have a look at the updates associated with this. This is where it gets really quite interesting. And we're going to go scroll down to the bottom of the updates, just so we start seeing... It's, I don't know, let's see where the updates start. Okay. So, what, we're February last year, and everything's been paid, Wouldn't not change of address, sending out surveys, this all looks very good, names out, now we're in March, people with the postcards, not really fussed by this, so obviously we've got a lot more stuff going on here. Then... They start talking about wooden boxes, that sounds all very interesting, and they have an annual convention, that's very good, you do July, good time for the premiere, all this stuff, continuing on, free role playing game day, and you know, usual stuff, again May, all looking good. So. June, they're getting dice together, all looking very good, getting PDF together, terrific, more change of address, not a problem, the convention's happening, all very good. Now, this is actually interesting, so you've got to keep this in mind. So August, they said they were going to deliver, we're now in July. So Liz has pneumonia, which is the first start of basically things going downhill. Liz, through the context of this, appears to have a full-time job as well, that's fine. Um, I have a full-time job too, I work, you know, 60, 50, 60 hours a week, give or take. I also edit text, do a wide variety of other things through this time, so I get the sense of 200 pages plus artwork. I think Liz is also doing the artwork on this as well. So, I kind of get a sense of the amount of time it'll take after she gets sick. So this is the start of things going slightly wrong. Right. So he's got wooden boxes in August. All very good. He's going to put the bo bo books in it. It's going to take a little bit of time. When's it got the books? He then starts going to conventions, which is where it gets really a little bit concerning. Because he's got $125,000, he's got a finite amount of time, what's the first thing you do? You'd think you'd finish up the books, or at least you'd work on it in some regard, but he's going to be late and he's going to Gen Con. Then there's discussion associated with coins in October. Okay. 
So Liz is editing, so she's gotten better, and she's editing now. And my view is 200 pages, game, what have you, working evenings, weekends, maybe two months, maybe three months at most. So October, the dice bags, more about the dice bags, we're in October. I'm going to give away the punchline here. So, still no discussion associated with the time frames, but he's been to Germany. So, he's selling books, the old versions, for like $50, $40, and he's gone to Germany. He's gone to Spiel 13 in Germany. No indication about when this is going to be happening. In... What's this? This is around December sometime. November. End of November. Liz writes an update. So, she's had three months here to edit the books. Her being sick is really out of the spectrum now because she was better and she's been editing the books for three months now. Still no indication. There's a description of her getting sick, but, you know, no real indication of when this book's going to arrive. Talking about what she said in August, all this kind of stuff. So it's all very curious, lots of writing, but no actual indication. Except now they're projecting to 2014 as when the stuff's going to come through. Which makes no sense. Then they present a free PDF of a game that we don't have the rules for, so it's kind of curious. Some problems with the PDF link. And then we get to the next thing. No delivery, no notion of anything, but now here's another Kickstarter project that uh, Richard Loomis is sending us towards. When you click on this, you find something quite disturbing. So this is another project that he's starting up for. He might get his money for it, who knows. But if you scroll all the way down here, risks and challenges. I have two successful Kickstarter projects, both of which are late, but nearing completion. So. Before he even started Tunnels and Trolls, he already had this game, Ace of Aces, that's late. <laughs> so, there seems to be a history here of not actually completing projects and just, you know, putting stuff up on Kickstarters. And a huge amount of good faith from the community. I've got to say, I mean, although it could just be the same five fanboys, there seemed to be a lot of good faith energy from the community, Tunnels and Trolls community, associated with this guy's efforts. And if it weren't for that, I'd be very, very concerned. But really, honestly, I don't think I'm going to be seeing my deluxe tunnels and trolls through this. And it leaves a really bad taste in my mouth. Going to Germany, going to Gen Con, playing business as usual, selling cold copies of his game, all this kind of stuff to actually people that have put in the Kickstarter. All very, very strange behavior. And now, a new project. It just doesn't appear to me to be, to be the right way to do a Kickstarter. Anyway, when or if I get the Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, I will be sure to put a review up on the same YouTube channel. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. I hope it's absolutely fantastic, because quite frankly, the wait has been phenomenal.